Hello everyone, it is Toby from Toby's Urban Sketch. We're drawing this fun scene up here. Lots of little colours, windows, not much foreground going on. So we're going to have a little bit of fun playing with that, seeing how we can get our colours sort of fill the page without uh, giving any context of pavement in the foreground. Just going to be using a 0.3 fine liner pen and really we'll just be going for it. It'll be quite, you know, all these normal principles of simplification and having a bit of fun, making things experimental. I've got a new um, class on Skillshare. If you're a Skillshare member, um, there's a link below in the description and that is all about experimental techniques in watercolor, including a couple of things we'll be doing today. But it's almost two hours worth of, of classes and things if you fancy checking it out. If not, no worries, let's let's plow on, keep going today. So I'm just gonna start. I want my, I've got my tape here. I want to get my lines going off to the edge of this tape. I'm not too worried about exact proportions here. The, um, the photo is actually fairly square. So I'm gonna have to, to make it fit my landscape piece of paper, we're gonna have to have a play with some of, some of the shapes and sizes we see, perhaps add a little bit to one of these buildings, for example. If we bring our other building in here, maybe maybe we already make the idea, the decision that we're going to lengthen this building on the right. There's a lot of lovely lights and darks going on. It should be a lot of fun, I think, to just grab and have a play with. Doing this sort of idea of continuous line sketching, uh, not not sort of not dying by it, not having to do it, but it's a lovely way of making yourself simplify and. Still having a lot of fun and adding the sort of essence of, of a scene and the idea of complexity. You can see this outline, so we just get this sort of silhouette. You can almost make some random squiggly lines because it's it's just very complicated, isn't it? All these balconies and things going on. And bring this other building down. And then we've got this sort of road in the background, and there's more kind of outline going on as well. There's just an awful lot going on in this dark area. So let's just bring down another of these important lines. We can sort of start laying out a little bit of the idea of these windows. Now, this is where we'll see how far we get down. And you can see this, this third window matches up with this horizontal line. So that sort of level here. We've got four windows in this building. And you've got a horizontal line here. And that, that fits, so we, we've managed successfully managed to cut off the bottom of this building. One, one decision we can make now is how to add in the things like this door. So we're just going to add in the top of that door. And then we can start moving around elsewhere as well. So we've got these interesting windows. And I'm going to sort of continuous line them, just getting those ideas of what's going on. Adding a fair bit of detail, fair bit of, sort of context, whilst not getting stuck in the sort of precision of detail, just getting really these bits which I find the most interesting. And we've got these other textural things going on as well, lots of vertical lines, lots of horizontal lines. And we come down here and we've got another balcony which we can sort of this one perhaps sketch in a little bit more accurately always a bit complicated getting the right perspective into a balcony you can see underneath it which I always find in my head it's a little bit confusing but just a little bit of thought we can't quite see this red door here but that doesn't mean we can't imagine the other side of it just add it in anyway the same with this this sort of door onto the balcony can't see the other side, but we've got most of the shape there, so let's just add it in. You can see just working backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards with my lines, just building up the sort of interest and building up the level of detail gradually. You can take cues from these kind of textural marks we've added in and start adding those in in other places as well. So we can then separate out what's a door, what's a window. We've got a little top of a window here, we could start adding in. And then these balconies are also quite interesting, aren't they? So let's just suggest a few of those. 
and then down here what have we got we've got lots and lots of windows and general complexity and balconies and i'm just going to suggest all of that with some rough lines and we can also do a little bit of just simple up and down hatching to capture do you see how there's this sort of definite shadow which comes along like this so we've got this light and then we've got this shadowed portion and that continues and because of the way that we've cut off the the bottom it continues all the way to the bottom of our page we can double up on some of these structural lines if we want or we can just leave it this sort of havoc of darkness which is fairly realistic given that we can't make out much going on in that background anyway just noticed a couple of interesting wires i'd like to add in here and just by linking them to structures like inventing a satellite dish or putting this in this sort of box so in these wires maybe they make a little bit more sense then we're going to move on to this building let's add a couple of interesting touches like the, the bottom of this bush and then that leads on to this doorway which we can only just see just think when you peel off the pen now it's going to look like a little sort of window out into something interesting but we have all these lines flowing off the page so that's why i'm well, I say for most of them, we're drawing off to the edge and just a, just correcting a couple of them which I hadn't drawn off the edge because I really do want that effect where the lines just seem like they should have kept going. And we've lost some of the accuracy here in terms of how big and how far apart these windows are but I'm not bothered by that at all, not in the slightest. I think that's the nature of just doing some sort of fun quirky expressive sketching and we just learned to love the decisions we made which led us to not quite getting those proportions 100 percent if we wanted to do it again of course we could do it again and be a little more accurate learn from the things we've done now on these wires now that i've got this other building in i can start bringing them in across the context as well and you see how they sort of loop around, a couple of them attach. And now we've got this kind of continuation of those same textures, the same wires, that same bit of context going everywhere. We've used the same rough marks in a few places for shadows. We've got these same ideas for windows and doors. So everything's now feeling nice and consistent. And I think with that, we can probably say our sketch is done. We just add a bit of shadow in here as well and then a little bit in here under here and then our, our sketch is now done and we can move on to adding some sort of splashy interesting colors i just got a few sort of calligraphy chinese style brushes here and um, this is probably about the size of a uh, a size 10 or 12 round brush just for context a bit longer so it holds lots of water and it's also very soft so you can sort of dry brush on in different ways you can add different textures and tones and it's quite fun to have a play with really do my normal thing just adding plenty of water on the page and what i'm trying to do first is grab all these bits of shadow even if i have to link them with a little bit of water we'll get all that shadow and also this lovely sky i'm just gonna get the whole sky wet And then we'll go straight in with a bit of phthalo blue, a bit of cobalt blue, and a little bit of indigo. We've got lots of different blues here now that we can sort of move around, let them flow around. I'm just experimenting really with what these textures can do if left to their own devices. We can continue just using those same blues. And bring a bit of murkiness in get these shadows all linking together these um these three blues indigo um cobalt phthalo they all act quite differently underwater 
different levels of granulation, staining. So they're quite fun to just play with and just see the effect you can get. We can also just do a little bit of splashing with these rich tones. Do you see how that brings out immediate little negative cauliflowers? And already this image is kind of alive just through these, these interesting textures which we're developing. I think up here we could have a bit more tone. So let's just touch in some cobalt, let that move. Perhaps bring it along to the top of the building. And down here, why don't we accentuate the shadow with a bit more indigo, which doesn't tend to, you see, it doesn't tend to move as far or not as quickly. Um, and there we go. So that's our kind of shadowy blues, which already, I think, brought a lot of life to our image. Next, we're going to have a little go with some quinacridone. This one is a quinacridone deep gold. So it's got that lovely warm yellow tone. Great for this kind of building, which has plenty of uh, warmth in it, sort of sandstone, isn't it? You can see that it's very rich color. What I'm gonna do initially, keep these separate and then start to blend them into a few places. I want to keep this shadow quite separate but perhaps we'll let them run together up here. I've got my page on a slight angle as well, probably about 10, 15 degrees. Um, and that just lets things sort of move around a little bit, but not too much. Okay, what else can we add a little bit of? Well, we've got these lovely red doors, so let's get a little bit of red. I'm gonna have a little bit of magenta as well. And we'll pick out our doors and just Gently place the colours in there. What we can do is, if we're quite loose, things will just splash. You get these little splashes to the side. And there's a kind of authentic way of introducing a little bit of randomness. We can just introduce that in a couple of other places as well, perhaps in some of these windows, and suggest the same idea going on elsewhere. What else do we have? We've got a little bit of um, sort of light coloured windows, haven't we really? And we've painted with a lot of water here. So what we should be able to do is just gently come back in. And suddenly we can remove pigment from a couple of these windows. These ones are particularly light in, in tone. They're still a sort of yellow, so our concept of quinacridone still works. And the other way, of course, of making something appear light is by contrasting it with what's around. So if we come back with a little bit more deep quinacridone to the sides of those windows, suddenly the windows also brighten up. This window, of course, really dark. I'm not sure if it's a window, but probably a window which is open, I guess. It's just a little bit of indigo, which we can just drop in there. We do the same in a few places, but we really want to emphasize shadow. I really encourage you to have a little go at sketching, painting really loosely. It can be so freeing and fun and takes away a little bit of the stress of trying to get things perfect. I don't mean to over plug myself, but that's essentially what my Skillshare class is about, is about just a few different techniques like using salt, using continuous line drawing, using wax, ways of suggesting detail without getting stuck in too, de too hard and just having a bit of fun and exploring how your colors can do what they want. A little more splash in here. I'm just adding some extra textures. You can see as because it was so wet, some of the textures that I popped in earlier have actually been lost. Like we had some lovely negative cauliflowers which have gone. I'm just trying to reintroduce something like that again. Tapping with the brush, of course it's coating my wall with, with colour, but that's all right. 
a little bit more of our reds we can just enrich in a couple of places I think we're pretty much done to be honest there's a real danger with something like this of very easily overdoing it over sketching and, and losing that sort of spontaneity this is all going to of course um, dry a lot a lot lighter than it is at the moment so just need to be aware of that and um, don't be too cautious with the colors we're applying but also just be wary that you don't want to overwork it don't want to assume things will look fine when it's dry just when they look good now we can sort of leave it so that's what i'll do i'll leave this to dry now which i think will probably take a little while probably 15 20 minutes i'm not going to use a hair dryer because with all this water that will sort of push this water around it will push the pigment and it will probably flatten it a lot we've got so many interesting shapes going on that i want to see what it actually looks like when it's had a chance to do its own thing and here we go quite a fun little sketch this and you can see so i've taken off the masking tape and it just provides that really fascinating sort of window out doesn't it that having these lines just disappearing off you can tell it's part of something sort of bigger there's lots of lovely tones textures these funny mixes of colors going on in the sky we've got all these color flowers and just shapes and all dots of color and we've got some real depth and highlights as well so i really like this one i hope you enjoy it um take something from it and uh have a little go yourself at doing something a bit like this just loosening up and having a bit of fun with your sketching thank you for watching